a good start. I'd rather start with those than original ones, low key. Uh, uh, hey, what's up, guys? It's Tyler. I'm here with uh, Shy Malka. We're gonna kind of go over his 1961 Panhead. We're gonna talk about the details of the bike a little bit. Um, you know, there's a lot of really cool parts on here that I'm excited to talk about. He'll tell some stories about the bike, and then we'll get a little bit of riding footage in. Hell yeah, sounds good. My first old bike was a pre-unit Triumph, so a lot of parts on this bike are British, and I feel like choppers in general wouldn't really be choppers without the British parts. You know, you got like the Wassel fenders and the Wassel tanks being so relevant on these sort of bikes these days that yeah. it's kind of a, one of those things. So that's kind of what I was trying to achieve on this bike. It's kind of a Harley with a bunch of pre-unit Triumph parts. Yeah. So, do you have any, uh, do you have a favorite part on the bike? I'd say the Speedo is probably one of my favorite parts on the bike. And it works. Usually, it works, yeah. Usually on a chopper, it's not necessary, but being a personal bike, something I'm not gonna sell, kind of just log in your miles. The odometer is cooler than the speed. And how many miles are on it? Right now on there, there's 10. Oh, but okay. I had like a solid two before, and then we reversed it, you know, and just okay. kept it, kept it Fair going enough. from the repaint, you know? Fair enough. And how many years have you had this bike? Been coming up on like five years now. Okay. Yeah, this one's not going anywhere. Yeah. It's the key. And why did you choose this color? So, my dad's actually a big car guy, and I went to an auction with him uh, like eight years ago. And there was this SL190 Mercedes. It was like a 58, and it was painted this color, and I just kind of fell in love with that. And I just told myself I'd paint something that color one day. And when I was building this bike, I had the opportunity, so I was like, fuck it, I'm gonna run with that, you know? Since you got the bike, have you changed anything, or is this how you built it, this is how it stays? This is kind of how I built it. I didn't change anything on it. I always think about it, but. This one took like years of dreaming yeah. to kind of get together. Usually when it comes down to like uh, these bikes, a lot of people nerd out on like all original shit. But in my opinion, everyone's got a different opinion, but I think what's important is just the drivetrain. Yeah. So you got like the motor, the trans, especially like on a generator motor, you know, it's titled off the motor. So that's the heart of the bike. Yeah. You know what I mean? So to me, Fucking motor, trans, original, everything else is just really steel, you know? Yeah. And just fucking Bondo and cosmetic shit. Yeah. yeah. So did you buy like a donor bike and pull the motor and trans and then buy the frame and everything separately? I did. With this one, I bought a complete bike. I got it for a pretty good deal. I feel like pans were selling for like 15 at the time. I got it for like 11, okay. give or take. But it was nice. I was able to pull the drivetrain out and kind of sell everything else and make the drivetrain worthwhile. Okay. Because you know? the shit's expensive, you know? Absolutely. Yeah, lost in the sauce easy. So the front, the front end is a pre-unit front end. It's from an early Triumph. So I got, a, I got the front drum on there kind of just for the look. You know, yeah. I was kind of going for all the British parts and the Triumph parts. But another cool thing, which is a trick, is these fucking two straps, these U-bolts that just hold the handlebars and the risers up. And then I had some homie in fucking Sweden whip up these uh, old kind of Flanders style U-risers. I sent them like specs and I drew it up. And I kind of built this bike when I wasn't doing as much fab work and stuff. And then who bent up the bars? Ari bent up the bars, you know. Timeless, classic, pre-unit bends. Fucking wanted to go uh, internal throttle with this one. You know, little things, keep everything off the bars. Grips are uh, owl grips from Japan, they make really nice shit. Have you had the same grips all five years? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. No, they're like nice and hard and not rubbery, so they kind of just stay in place. Yeah. Which is super neat. And what about these headlights? So the headlights are uh, Eric from FNA. He makes these headlights. These are like the first versions of the smaller ones you see everyone with these days. Yeah. But again, like 
I was super inspired off this old 50s, early 50s pre-unit show bike, rigid bike, and it had like the side-by-side -side lights, and I was kind of nerding out on that, so that's kind of where that came from. And then the, the tins I got from Mark Drews, um, he's kind of like a timeless legend that's built some very righteous bikes over the years. Um, funny how this went about actually. I had a pre unit Triumph at the time, it was a 57 T110, which is a swing arm bike. But the earlier Triumphs came with a rigid frame from the factory. And uh, you know, you can take those motors out and plop them right in those frames with no modifications. So I was kind of looking for one of those and I was scrolling through eBay and there was this chrome pre-unit frame. So I was tripping on it, it wasn't too expensive. The chrome a frame would cost you like, you know, a thousand, fifteen hundred bucks. Yeah. And that's kind of what it was at he was asking for it. So I went for it. I just fucking threw in a bid and I won the auction. And I had no idea who I was buying it from. And I sent the money and I see fucking Mark Drew's name in the PayPal transaction. And I was just tripping out because at the time, having that Triumph, you know, I was nerding out looking online at all these bikes and Mark Drew's builds have always kind of stood out to me. He's like a very timeless man, does things, you know, with very, with a lot of fucking taste. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. So. That was super cool, so I got this fucking frame, and then years went down the line, and I've always wanted to build a panhead, ever since I kind of got into motorcycles, but it took a while to actually have the funds for the panhead, or just to even get all these parts together. So, you know, I started a little pile of parts, and I figured that I'd have to sell the Triumph to build a panhead. Yeah. So I ended up reaching back out to Mark and I asked him if he'd be interested in the frame. I didn't want to just sell it on eBay and make some money on his name. So I hit him up and I was like, you know, are you interested in this frame again? And he, he said that he was. So, you know, we thought of a number and then we had a simple conversation and it kind of, I don't know exactly how it went about, but I asked him if he'd be down to whip me up a set of tins instead of buying it for me. So I ended up getting that frame back to him and he made me these tins and I'm super stoked. I got exactly what I wanted, you know, got the right side wall, the Hap Jones in there and the full length fender. So that's killer. Fucking stoked. That's so cool. I feel like, you know, when you, when you first kind of like enter this whole world, like that's one of those names, you For know, sure. people are like. They're talking about the Mark Drews bikes, and like I remember for me, there was that pan head with the headlights built into the split tanks. Oh, yeah, you yeah. remember that yeah, thing, yeah, yeah. you know? And like, there's just been all sorts. I mean, that might have been a flathead. Yeah, that could have been a flathead. It was either there was two black bikes that he built two years in a row, I believe. Yeah, I one be with wrong. the headlights, one with that. Yeah, yeah. I think it was a pan head, actually. I think it was a pan head. The flathead was either year before or after, but uh, yeah. yeah, it's cool. I don't think I'd know. You know, I don't. I can't think of anyone else I know offhand that like has a set of the Mark Drews tins that they're just like riding around like this, and that's like. I think that's really cool. You know. I feel you. No, for sure. I'm honored to you know have that tank and fender from him, and I'm stoked that it's out there being ridden. You know. Yeah. Cool. So then, moving on from the uh, from the gas tank, you already talked about the speedo a little bit. Um, you want to talk about the kickstand? Yeah, the kickstand, there's this guy in uh, Japan, his name is Hideo. I think that's how he pronounces his name. Um, super talented cat, makes a lot of uh, one-off handmade goods. I think he started with the kickstands. He makes all sorts of cool shit now, but... I thought it was super neat and something you don't see every day, you know? And, for this bike, I wanted to keep it, so I figured I'd throw something neat on there. And uh, yeah, I just hit him up and had him made it, and I get compliments on that everywhere I go, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's one of the most, like, recognizable things yeah. to me. 
whether you're in or bikes or not. Yeah, you know, yeah. You think you it's see, fucking cool. You see two snakes on the kickstand. You're like, all right, this is rad. Cool. And then uh, moving back, has it been magfired the whole time? Yeah, I've always been kind of temperamental on you know whether I should run a mag or go fucking distributor and battery, but. Overall, it's low maintenance. You fucking sure it might you know it might take you a second or two more to start your bike if you don't get the procedure right. But you don't have to worry about a battery dying. You don't have to trickle charge your fucking bike. It's not an iPhone, you know. It's it's a Harley Davidson. <laughs> but yeah, I had some cat named Don uh, engrave the uh, deflector, and he did a killer job. I kind of went for like a Cholo Pink Panther fucking knocked it out of the park. You know, he had it for like a week and he, you know, he went in on it and then fucking another week goes by and he goes more in detail and more in detail and I hit him up and I was like, fuck, how much is this gonna cost, dude? Like, this shit's gonna be expensive. But honestly, it's a, it's a work of art and it's, you don't see a lot of people with engraved shit, you know, so. It's like a fucking tattoo for your bike, you know? Absolutely. The million dollar air cleaner. You have the linker? Yeah, I got a linkered on here. You know, a lot of people say like a linkered and a mag is kind of like the hardest thing to start and to ride, but I think they run the best with a panhead. Yeah. You know? They came on panhead, so yeah. naturally I just think uh, that's the way to go. The pipes are MCM header pipes, so it's got this little tab right here which is nice kind of just holds everything into the head because these old motors like knuckle heads just slip into the heads and then you got the pan heads that just kind of rest on top of the flange you know so if you don't have them mounted enough they'll they'll come out they'll break so that's a cool little part old old part right there um those lights are super neat too i wanted to run something period the lights are LED, that's kind of the only thing that's not really period on this bike, but you know, I want to ride it, I want to see. So, besides that, everything is kind of how they do it back then, you know? And no sissy bar. Yeah, no sissy bar. I wanted to use these uh, struts from a pre unit Triumph again. So when you go on trips, no sissy bar, and you have ridden this, like, oh, yeah. you, you've taken it, you know, it's not uncommon that you do a 500, 600 mile weekend on this. For sure. So where, where do you strap things? So I just have a nice pack that I run off the handlebars. And, you know, to be honest, before I kicked it with you guys, I wasn't, I'm not the biggest camper, you know? So all that was kind of new to me. And, you know, on a bike with no sissy bar, if you just have the right shit, you can fit everything in there. Yeah. All you really need is a couple, you know, change of shirts, underwear, socks, and you're fucking good. So... As long as you've got your tent and a sleeping bag, shit, you're straight. So the seat I got from uh, Adam over at River Seat Company, it's kind of just a take on the old uh, Bates Cobra seat. It's got like a thick profile going on. It's wide in the back. Fucking nailed that. I'm really stoked I got that from him. And uh, shit, this hinge is super neat too. This guy Labeef makes this fucking Labeefster makes this hinge and it's super neat it just goes into the down tube you know i make some other goods here and there uh make some belts and little cool trick one-off things but you know since i'm running the bag and i don't have a battery in the oil tank i made this cool little trick tool storage you know i just keep all my tools in here yeah Everything I need, a little dazzling, you know. It fits right in your oil bag. Yeah, fits in your oil bag. You know, some people don't think you got tools, but you really got tools. There you go. Homie in the UK fucking made this thing. I think he goes by Demon Lung. Yeah. But I was bugging him for that gas cap for a while or to make me one. And he ended up saying, fuck it, you want to buy the one off my bike? And I was like, shit, I'm down. It's a super cool piece. And, 
you know, just the little things. The little things what keeps me going. Yeah. All right, Shaq, thank you for telling us about your bike. My guy.